throughout Mormon history, many places have been assumed to be Book of Mormon lands. And although many of the places assumed are not in part correct, it would seem that each researcher has their own agenda in trying to convince you that their hypothesis is the correct one. And I would certainly be of no exception other than I am telling you not to believe one word of this book until you have used your agency, made a decision, and verified your decision before the Lord. Okay, we're reading Nephite North by Daniel Lowe, chapter 12, page 132. In reading many of these theories, I come to the conclusion that each seems to be unable to set aside their theory long enough to view the facts with an open and uncluttered mind. Many of these theories seem to be based on a very weak foundation, if based on a foundation at all. An example of this, perhaps the most irresponsible of them all, is made by the organization F-A-R-M-S or farms, regardless of the so-called evidences that they haven't found, this church recognized band of deceived men based their imaginary findings as theory is too good of a word to use on fallacies and assumptions. Ironically, there is no foundation for this foundation, as we will see shortly. In recent years, two other researchers have sprung up. Wayne May and Rod Meldrum, although Rod does a remarkable job in showing DNA evidences for the Book of Mormon, the geography part of the research is based on the theory of the location of the hill Kumora, C-U-M-O-R-A-H, as being in New York, not to mention any other aspects that need to be understood prior to examination. Rod does an excellent job in showing the simple principle of proving your foundation using farms as an example in the supposed landing of the Nephites somewhere south of the Isthmus of Darien, D-A-R-I-E-N. Both researchers hit the nail on the head as to the homelands of the Nephites and centered them in the middle of the Mississippi Valley. <laughs> so, uh, my Naga, you know what I'm saying? This is Nephi the Naga. So, when when we're reading this, you know, story in this Book of Mormon, and we're going to get more into it, this is just our, our not our intro into this Mormon stuff, because we, you know, have dug on different, you know, levels before, but, you know, we're using this to get a familiarity before we really pop off a whole entire series on youtube called mormons digging deeper man and uh we'll definitely you know get back on this text but really you know connect a lot of other sources and see you know how we can bridge our story you know what i'm saying other people are doing a great job but you know none of them have the dragonfly perspective that drop nation has you know achieved throughout these years man so you know we have to do it man we have to see where all the real babies are, you know, even though someone can be digging on the Book of Mormon or digging on, you know, certain drop within the Mormon, um, you know, the teachings, you know, the Joseph Smith teachings. But to get the babies out, my nugget, you know, it requires it requires vibration, man. And uh, all praise to while we keep in the code. We put no power beside our power before our power. And with that comes a higher vibration. What we call a dragon. Flat eye perspective. Welcome back, man. It feels good. Family strong. Ahab for all the Ahab. All the well, you know, Baruch's, man, from the tribe, man. Uh, it feels good to pop off a new droplet. A lot going on in the house. You know, I apologize that I haven't been as present as I want to be, uh, you know, dropping this drop. But, you know, first come, you know, first things first, man. We got to make sure the house is solid. Therefore, you know, with, uh, you know, great Chef Candy doing her thing and the great droplets doing their thing. I could do great things, too, you know. <coughs> so I just want to do great things, too. And uh, this is where we're at right now, man. And it feels good 
to pop off with all the tribe, all the youth and squad. And I appreciate all the love, man, all the AI, all the Baruch, man, from the tribe. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, drop it at number six. And uh, <laughs> to infinity we go, man. <laughs> it's all happening, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate all your AI. But uh, Chef Candy also gives full appreciation as well, man. And it feels good, man, to have a tribe, you know what I mean, that, that you can go through all this with. You know, we're all going through so much, man. You got to fall back off each other sometimes, give each other, you know, space to operate because we're all going through so much. At the same time, you got to be a steady ock and a steady aqua. You know what I mean? Not a conditional ock, <laughs> not a conditional aqua, but someone who's really there. You know what I'm saying? The best the best they can be, the best we can be. You know what I mean? We're all doing our best. Uh, you know, don't mean that, you know, you can, you know, Use us, you know, without misusing us. You know what I mean? It's, it's you can use me, you know. Just don't misuse me, you know. Uh, we can use each other as ox and aquas, but don't misuse each other. You know what I mean? That's what we're really learning to do. So this is all happening, man. We're all learning all this stuff together. We're all figuring these things out, man. And we come in here, we drop nation, and you know, to have a secluded alcove, man, a secluded place to talk these things out. To put it all in perspective, to have the awareness to say, oh, yeah, we we see what's going on around us. We could watch the news. We could watch all these things, man. Um, you could be aware. Got to be aware. You know, when I say keep the code, it does not mean turn your blinders on. And, you know, it just means that even if your blinders were on and you in the code, that's all it that's all that's required of you, my nigga. To be in the right place at the right time and the right flow. And your plan comes secondary to your flow. You know what I'm saying? You don't have a plan and then try to develop a flow. You got to be in the flow. You know what I mean? Then you can plan. You know, we can have all these plans as a tribe, but if we're not in a united flow, you know, if everyone's not on code, you know what I mean? You got to take a step back and say, all right, where's my code keepers at? Before I say, Let's build, let's build this. We got to say, who are we building with? We don't want no fake aha, my nigga. We want the real aha, you know, the real, true, you know, water that flows, man. It's, you know, those that know that they're here for a reason. If you know you're here for a reason, I'm talking to you. you know what I'm saying so. Uh, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're digging on. That's what we're digging on within ourselves, man. We're getting our houses strong. We're paying attention. We being aware, we see what's happening in politics, what's being passed, what's this, but none of that matters, my nigga. If you ain't on code, man. And none of it matters, period, when you're on code, really. You, you can't say, oh, well, I got you, and then worry about everything they're doing at the same time. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, I got you. Either oh, well, I got you, or oh, well, I didn't say, keep the code. And, you know, freak out about whatever misinformation they put out. Like, keep the code and turn that shit off, honestly. And vibe up, you know, peek in, see what's happening, get the vibe. But you can't be reactionary. We can't just be reacting at this point. By the time you get it off the news or any platform, you are way too late, my nigga. You are way too far behind. You can't just be waiting for their vibration of fear to react to. You have to be actively keeping the code yes actively planning but your flow comes before the plan so right now we're getting the flow right we're getting in code which is our flow so a plan can take place not just any plan but the right plan and this is net fight the nagas And the plan ain't televised. The plan doesn't go through the airwaves. <laughs> it's a plan that we all feel at the same dang time, at the same, you know, on the same frequency. It's in our heart bowl, man. Either, either you believe it or you don't. This is when those that <laughs> are really about what they say, you know what I'm saying, are coming out. And those that are like, yeah, 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 I get it. But, you know, I get it. But there's always a but, you know what I mean? <laughs> And that's just what it is. You know what I mean? But allow why. You know what I'm saying? We want to protect all of our tribe, all of our families, 
and we're going to do that, but we're not the ones <laughs> that, you know, have the, you know, authority, my not, you know what I'm saying? Hawa got the authority. So you can do all that without the authority. And then it's just the same cycle coming back around and around. We got Rosewood, but the authority, you know, was was Rosewood on code or did they have a bunch of churches all over the place? You know what I'm saying? Where was their frequency? They knew what they knew. We all know that. You know, I, I give AI to all all the all my nagas that's ever popped off in any way, man. I think about the Black Panthers all the time. You know, man, if they had moved in more silence, different things, but they had to, they had to be boisterous, man. They had to be, you know, a show, you know, uh, they had to show, you know what I mean, that, that force in real time. And I, I get that, you know what I'm saying? Hawa definitely, uh, shows force in real time. When Joshua was rocking with Hawa, when Moshe's rocking with Hawa, when David is rocking with Hawa, please believe it's a show of force in real time. But that doesn't come before the flow. It don't come before the code. And that's the action world. And lie away. Never fight the night. Never fight the night. Here we popping up. Let's pick it up from here. So they're in New York City talking about a hill called Kumora. Kumora. Now, is the real Kumora in New York or, you know? Is this this is this where they just want to put it? You know what I'm saying? We know these cities are somewhere here. You know, the Moors and the Mormons <laughs> have their theories, right? <clears throat> now it says Rod does an excellent job in showing the simple principle of proving your foundation using farms as an example in the supposed landing of the Nephites. Some were somewhere south of the Isthmus of Darien. Both researchers hit the nail on the head as to the homelands of the Nephites and centered them in the middle of the Mississippi Valley as the hub, yet both seem to differ slightly as to where the north side of the wheel is. I might mention that I am in debt to both of them as uh, for a fair part of their research, both of the previous mentioned parties used today's recognized Hill Camorra as a starting point, yet failed to research this most important foundation to the geography of their research. Along with farms, one researcher makes the understandable mistake of assuming today's North was the same today as it was prior to the to the catastrophe that took place at the crucifixion, quote unquote. Okay, dodge your own name, hijack, dodge your own hijack. Unless we're talking about your crucifixion by night. That's a great point. We talked about the orientation a lot. Um, you know, your north one, your one, your map has been flipped. All right, so where's north? I mean, you can flip it and say north is south. But in the conception of North, you know, it's different than the map orientation. You know, it's like you got to orient both things. The conception of North, according to just the orientation of the ancients, a lot would say that was East. They would say East was North based on, you know, how things were translated out of the original flow. Um, now, by the time you do that and then you flip your map, <laughs> Is that bringing us to a closer orientation? But you see how they've flip flopped us. First, you have to go from north to east, and then you got to flip that. And then what? You get west. <laughs> so, I mean, damn. Is north really west? I mean, you know, it, it, look, man. We're going we gonna to know one day, man. One day we're going to know, man. Um, I like the. Uh, as a muzzle equidestant, you know, with so-called flat earth um, map projection that pretty much has the tree of life, you know, sort of in the center, right? And then you got uh, the magnetic north. So north is just, you know, it's not just like some type of uh, standardized compass, you know, up, down, left, right. North is the middle, you know, if you look at it like that. 
So for whatever plane of existence or realm of existence, they would have their own north, you know, based on wherever that middle magnetic tree root system really is. You know, north is just, um, it's an idea. <laughs> you know, does north really exist? Does south really exist? You know, we're, we're using that to talk about direction. But, you know, south could just be everywhere outside of north. North could be everywhere that's connected to the magnetic center. If we're talking flat drop 101. Now they're saying here that some catastrophe took place at the so-called crucifixion. The other simply misunderstood his own evidence, placing Nephite north in a northeastern direction. Okay. In reading the destructive element, in reading the destructive event of chapter eight of third Nephi that took place during this three hour event. Keep in mind some of the recorded earthquakes of the land and the damage that was caused in just a few seconds. And that's why we said this sounds a lot like Atlantis. Plato's description of how Atlantis fell was very similar, right? The ground started shaking, yada, yada, yada. You can connect that with this whole Thoth situation in the Emerald Tablets, talking about hopping in a ship with the dweller, you know, seeing, uh, you know, all the uh, pyramids going underwater. So is it all one thing? Now you put in Noah's flood. Uh-oh. Now you put in, you know, the book of Job and Leviathan. And you think, you know, did Hawa use his dragon, Leviathan? <laughs> A.K.A. Godzilla. Hey, shout out to the Copper Thread. We're talking about Godzilla, King Kong. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? We got that uh, drop coming in. You know, I know it's going to be a lot of wormhole drop coming out of that. You know, with them worms, man. Uh, King Khan, you know, trying to make it a, a con on con situation. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, it's a lot of uh, psychology going on. But yeah, did Leviathan sink Atlantis, man? I mean, so that's where we're going with this. You know, fight the noggin, as well as the Mormons digging deeper series. Coming in hot on YouTube. Uh, we're going to dig on, you know, sources like this, but we're going to go right into the book of Nephi, man. And we'll go right into, you know, all this Mormon drop and just keep going. Just keep on going. Keep the water flowing. Now it says, how is, how is it that anyone can assume that the geographical features, such as a narrow neck of land, mountains, rivers, and lakes, would remain even remotely the same as they were prior to this event? Does the narrow neck still exist at all? As one has to, or one is to read to see the drastic changes took place in the tune of rivers being dried up or their course being changed altogether. Okay, okay. It says new rivers were, new, new rivers being created where rivers never flowed before mountains became valleys. And valleys became mountains. And that's in the book. Helaman. H-E-L-A-M-A-N. Chapter 14, 23. Coastlines disappeared while others rose up out of the sea. Vast bodies of water disappeared. Never to be seen again. And bodies of water created with some still being here. While others have since disappeared. This land looks nothing like it did in the days prior to the crucifixion and again they just talking about this uh you know bcad situation and if there was no christ then there ain't no bcad so they were their mark of the crucifixion that's when you got to tie in this anatoly for the mako recon just like in the medieval history of the israelites they're putting you know this uh birth of this joshua at around what 1054 AD 1054 AD will be year one according to this true chronology so it's not even a BC AD situation you know what I mean you got the birth of Joshua or Kitsukoodo which they like to call Jesus but we ain't talking BC AD you're talking about a Mashiach that's born around 1054 AD and some had at 1154, 1153. 
You dig? So, you know, what kind of, it's almost like before that, this before that, <laughs> and then after that. And they made uh, these duplications and phantoms over and over again in the timeline, pushed real history back. So now we got here saying, um, coastlines disappeared while others rose up out the sea. So when did this really happen? I mean, if all this time has been switched around. When did this catac... We even got cataclysms as recent as what? 880. There's a big cataclysmic event. The flood of 880. We dug on that before. We got to get back on that. We got the Anasazi migration around 900 to around, around 1200, 1300, which is all mixed up in the Israel flow, the Toltec flow. The uh, Makir, Theodorus flow, Solomon the Builder flow, Sylvanus to Texas flow, so is that the time period of this so-called, you know, cataclysm with this so-called crucifixion, and when is it happening? And are we just talking about the American Holocaust? We don't have all the answers, but we're going to continue to ask the right questions. Vast bodies of water disappeared, never to be seen again, man. And bodies of water created with some still being here, while others have since disappeared. This land looks nothing like it did in the days prior to the crucifixion. The entire face of the land was changed. The entire face of the land was changed. I mean, North America with water going in the middle of it, you know, might look like two different continents, right? And that's all we're getting out of this is that there used to be this waterway, you know, this whole Mississippi River, but it was like an ocean, my nugget, like, you know, going in between right in the middle of North America. And then Utah had this big waterway as well. Like, it looked like Mesopotamia over here. Like Venice, you know what I mean? Like a huge Venice. And that's when I was getting on Horace Butler. When people say they cross rivers or people say they cross the water, you can't always assume you're talking the Atlantic Ocean. Not when the entire face of the land was changed. For the dismount. So where is Kumar? Another researcher by the name of David A. Palmer in his book, In Search of Kumara, makes the same mistakes as previously mentioned. However, there are a few things that he that he and I can agree on. First off, he makes a very good cause for making it clear that Kumara is not the New York Hill. So there is no reason to rehash the subject found in the first pages of his book. I will, however, reaffirm that there is no scriptural evidence or statements by Joseph Smith that places the name of Cumorah on the New York Hill as being the Hill Cumorah of the Book of Mormon. Aside from his Mexico geographical focus, I partly agree with Mr. Palmer. Second, in his book, he shows that Nephi North was located some 295 degrees west of our today's north. In this, I will agree that it was indeed much different than today's north, but he has overshot the true location by some 27 degrees. Although his evidence is weak and misguided, I will agree with this concept, but from the Yucatan location, he shows on his map found on page 255 and 265, Nephi North was in approximately 322 degrees, not, th not 295 degrees. Now that three two two reminds me of that secret society stuff, right? That uh, 
that skull and bones and bones and skull. You know what I'm talking about? And they use that number a lot. I'm wondering any connection with the promised land uh, location 322 degrees. Okay, okay. I told y'all we don't have all the answers, but we will ask the right questions. Third, Mr. Palmer makes a weak comparison of the Almecs and the Jaredites and never really takes a stand on the issue. The Almecs were the Jaredites, and if any DNA evidence ever surfaces, it would be shown as Asian. Well, where's Asia? <laughs> I think North America is Asia, Jack. But you just got to keep going in your recon. What happens is that these authors, they write these books, and they, they get frozen in time as if they can't go any further. You know what I mean? Horace Butler, he, he got to still think that this is Africa and you know, everything good over here came from over there and Africa over there instead of really seeing, you know, the truth that this is the old world. Same thing with this author here. You know, this this has to be a Roman Jewish colony in America, Kalelu's artifacts, instead of saying, no, this is the old world and Hebrews are already here connected to the land of Mu. The Muans. The Khan Dynasty. It ain't just popping off. You can't just be two dimensional and say, okay, well, according to the scripture, uh, the Hebrew, uh, the Israelite line started with these people here. Look, everything they're doing in the Israelite line came from somewhere. You can't just say the Israelites started, uh, you know, after the migration, you know, into the land of Goshen in Egypt. And then the 12 tribes, they have babies, and now you have Israelites. Their bloodline existed before that. The code that they're keeping exists before that. That's just the line that was chosen to continue the priesthood. It don't start there. That doesn't mean that Israelites just, it's a new nation. It's not new. You're just looking at a section of it. And taking a snapshot. But they're keeping an ancient code. An ancient love song, my naga. Back when the lands were connected, my naga. Allah. Wah. Full of dismount. So he said the Almecs were the Jaredites. I'm glad we got that in writing. So that when they say Jaredites, they don't have to act like they're talking about something non-Israel when we could connect the Almecs and the Toltecs back to Solomon the Builder we can connect the Almecs to the Shi dynasty the X-I Shi you can connect the Shi to the Tangu T-A-N-G-U-T back to the Mongo history back to the Karakatai the Karyats under Wong Kong Preston John you can connect the Almex with the Ogier. O G I I E R Ogier, the Danes. <laughs> all this, man, this is all Israel, my not. The Ogam, Sylvanus Ogam, or Solomon's father, Brabo, Ogam Brabo. Is this Ogier connection? Is this Almec connection? It's all you. And the Jaredites are you too. Whatever they want to call them. Nephites are you too. Alahua. So where's Asia? And does North America exist? Or does it just say so on your maps? Just like many of the Western tribes of Indians and Mexican people, and more specifically those matching that of the Alta, A L T I A I, Mongolians. What does Mongo mean? Quick, quick. What does Mongo mean? Mongo just means the great one. The great ones. The great race. The great ones. So who's the Mongo? Who's the greats? Who's the Russians? Who's Clan Ross? 
who's the chorus. However, would he have us believe that a people who were here for 1800 years had never ventured further than small geographical locations of the Almac? Well, now this author is assuming that the geographical look, the geographical location of the Almac is small. With, I mean, what are you going off of to say that there's a small geographical location of the Almac? You must not have connected them to Israel. <laughs> you must not have connected them to Wong Kong, Preston John, King David, Emperor of the Three Indians. But I, I don't think the Three Indians is a small geographical location unless you haven't connected it all. The Jaredites covered all of South America and North America, but were centralized in the western United States in the land of desolation and south into Mexico. And next time we're going to pick it up right here in the Isthmus of Derry. We're in the book Nephite North. Evidence of Ancient American Geography and Advanced Civilizations. Of the first Americans by Daniel Lowe. And we're talking to you, my naga. We're talking to my nagas, my neck goose, the king of kings and the queen of queens, the original spirals. All praise to Wah that we get to pop off forever. It's okay if you take your time waking up. You know why, man? Because this wake up is forever, man. This wake up is forever. And I'll praise a while for every single one of you. Keep surfing away. Choose up.